Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Nicolas Tranger, my colleague Romain uh, Sleutman. Uh, we work at Incubate. And one of our projects is um, Araku. Araku is. Um, we are researchers at Incubate, uh, a company in Belgium. Uh, we're a technology incubator, we're mainly in data center and cloud computing. Um, we will have another talk tomorrow at uh, CUFP <coughs> about the usage of cloud of, of um, virtual programming in general. This talk is about one of our products, Aracoon. Um, Aracoon is a, a distributed consistent key value store. Um, it's written in OCaml using LWT. And for those who know, know something about distributed programming, it's a, it's a, a multi um implementation. Um, so you get guaranteed consistency across clusters as long as a certain amount of um, cluster nodes is available, is reachable. Um, and it's capable to handle lots of networking issues and um, crashes, etc. Um, the first version of Aracoon, which is currently in production, uses M Tokyo Cabinet. It's a C library, uh, something like GDBM, DBM, um, as a backend. And Aracoon itself is available as a, an open source product. Uh, the website is in there. Uh, some of the features as a key value store, so the basic features of a key value store are get, set, delete. Uh, we have some others as well, like range, range lookups and, and prefix lookups, which is useful in, in certain um, applications. We have some transactional uh, support of, of different operations which should execute atomically. Uh, there is test and set, and we have this system called server-side extensions, where people can write their own custom functions which are executed inside um, the server and can be called from, from clients. Um, we use a simple binary protocol, uh, a custom protocol, and we have uh, several clients in OCaml, C, P, Python, and PHP. Um, Aracoon has been deployed at um, several thousands of um, customers, um, and it's used by several of the, the, the companies within our group. Um, it was created primarily as a metadata backend for a large scale storage system. Um, where we first experimented with an existing system, um, but that didn't work out as well, and the old system has been, the project has been cancelled by now. And it's used as a NoSQL no style storage for um, IaaS management. It's something cloudy. Um, next to Aracoon, we also work on Bartscape. It's an, uh, an append only B3. Uh, it's written in OCaml, pure OCaml, and it's meant to replace Tokyo Cabinet in, in the next iteration of, um, of Aracoon in a 2 cycle. Um, since it's append only, it should be friendly for SSD devices because we we learned um, Tokyo Cabinet due to its in-place replacements, etc. Simply trashes your SSD even after a couple of months. Um, and basket is available also as LGPL3 on our GitHub pages. Um, then why did we use OCaml? Um, OCaml brings a very short um, prototype to production cycle, which is really interesting if you if you have a small team. I need to get things working very quickly. Um, functional programming suits the domain of distributed computing pretty well. Um, it's, re it's, it's easier to reason about what you're doing, and in distributed setting, this is very important. Um, cooperative threads, the, the, the availability of it is also very useful. Uh, anyone who's ever written networking software using normal Java style threads knows this can be quite a pain. Uh, we got a question why we didn't use async. It's very simple. Async was not released at the time we started the ARCU project, so it became out of the DT. Uh, OCaml has, as you all know, a very fast compiler, which is very useful during development. Your cycle is very short. Um, the performance of the binaries is very well. It's very good. We also use quite a, quite a lot of Python in several applications, and there are huge performance differences between OCaml code and uh, the Python application. Um, and OCaml had been used in the Ampedata storage product before, and the CUFB talk will partially be about this one. Um, our experience using OCaml, um, it is fairly easy to get people up to speed, but it's, it does require some mental effort from newbies to, to the language. Um, it is hard, if possible at all, to find people with OCaml knowledge, in Belgium at least. Uh, but it's not strictly necessary because you can get people up to speed. Um, so we got to a stable version within two months, which is pretty fast for such a product. Um, we've been fixing bugs and adding features since then, obviously, and most of the times we did not introduce any new issues. 
which is a nice feature as well. Um, but this is not only due to a camel or the type system or whatever, it's also thanks to a huge set of system tests. Uh, and most of the issues we reported to us are due to misconfiguration or people doing things they're not supposed to do. So even though you have a very great language, it's hard to defend yourself against system in mistakes. Um, what we learned during the development, um, one of the things, the first point, we did introduce some object, we did use some object-oriented features of the language because, well, people should be familiar to them. It didn't really work out that way. Um, one of the very important points, but apparently um, Opam solves this uh, quite a bit, is having uh, a script to, to get people bootstrapped. So they have their compiler installed on the system, all the dependencies, etc. is just executing one command instead of covering all different packages from lots of different sources. Um, we learned it's advisable not to use the LWT syntax extensions because they make people think using something like LWT blah is the same as let something equals something else. So they don't know what's going on under the hood. Whereas if you have explicit binds, if you know about the WT, um, they need to think about what they're doing and, and, and when they have switch points, etc. So that, that's a plus. Um, in the first our cycle of Araku, we made the major mistake of letting real world input output creep into our access state machine, which makes testing really hard and makes maintenance of the system very hard. Uh, we fix this in 2.0 where the state machine is completely pure. So we're not doing any networking or this guy or whatever. Um, so this helps a lot in testing, uh, although we're not really sure yet how to do testing properly. At this moment, we just generate test cases and check whether, they, whether it works out. But there might be better ways. And finally, uh, Aracuna is under the AGPL, which does have some issues to be able to integrate it in other products, but it was not up to us, it's a bit in decision. Um, so that's okay. Uh, so the language is not too hard. They have a fast compiler. Um, sometimes things go very, very wrong on an assembly level, and luckily it is possible to to figure out what's going on using GDB, which compared to GAC is a nightmare. Um, the runtime, and I'm just giving some some bugs and issues we experienced, and some people might think these are not bugs and we don't care about them. We did because they did introduce crashes and segmentation faults and stack overflows and whatever in production deployments, and we can't have those. Um, as an example, we had um, um, an, over an overflow in the C layer, which is this uh, set bug for us. It was a bug. So we had a, corrupt in a corruption in the stack, and then applications started doing things they are not at all supposed to do. And it's very hard to debug and figure out what's going on. Um, one of the problems we had with OCaml in general is the lack of tooling. For example, uh, if we have a memory leak, it's really hard to debug this. You can see, oh, I'm using 20 gigabytes of heat, but why? Which object types? Uh, then uh, sometimes the limited, the limited set of library forces you to write very trivial functions, but they might be in, in, in in the standard library, but they're not. Um, a very good thing, both OCaml, the Unix package, as well as LWT, provide very good bindings to low-level, system-level syscalls, um, which allows you to, to start writing system-level applications very easily. Um, then one, one more issue we had once, we, we, open, we didn't open a certain module, but we did open another one in the PC2 package. These are two package. Um, it turned out not using the C-level thing when something went wrong, it wanted to throw an, an exception. But due to the OCaml module not being loaded, this exception was not registered in the runtime, so we just got sex faults at runtime. It's a pain. You just want to throw up an error or something, you get a sex fault. Um, we had some infrastructure issues. OCaml build, is, our own uses OCaml build as of now. It works pretty well. But then for another project, you want to integrate C++ code, and that's a hell. You can try, but 
Um, we were not convinced by Oasis. Um, there is this quote, Oasis in you, maybe. Um, but we, <laughs> we did work, um, start um, looking at Opam, and it looked very, very interesting. Um, LWT, it's really great to work with. It provides lots of features. Um, the maintainers are very active and very responsive on the mailing list, so that's a big plus. And documentation is pretty good, except if there is no documentation at all for certain, for certain modules. So you have to dig into the source code. But um, from a commercial user's point of view, um, the irre irregularity and, and unpredictab unpredictability of their releases is sort of a pain once in a while. And we did experience regressions, and that's something you really don't want if you spend uh, lots of man days fixing, uh, no, figuring out the bug. You reduce it to very simple test cases, you submit it, they fix it, they fix it in the next release, and then two releases later, the same issue appears again. You really don't want that kind of thing. Um, so sometimes things are... <laughs> okay. Um, sometimes things are changed quite a lot within two different releases, so it's hard for us to track and, and to validate whether we can trust these new releases. Um, performance, let's just put it in there. There is quite a huge performance impact, but I guess that's normally due to the, the asynchronous um, programming model. Um, and then once while when you go into the source code, you see these comments and they make some alarms going off in my head when I read these things. Um, it might work, but especially for people who, well, we do have some opposition in the company as well, people who don't like Ocampo and who don't like LWT, and this gives them some munition to say to higher management, oh, they're using these libraries and they won't work, etc. So, um, a conclusion. What, what do these people use? Um, they mainly use C++ and Boost. Uh, do they read the, the Boost comment? <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> print, them, print them a good Boost error message. <laughs> so to summarize, overall we have a very positive experience using a camel for, for this type of product. Um, built infrastructure could use some love, but hope I'm well fixed things. LWT is great, but release engineering, testing, etc. could uh, be a little bit, could improve. Uh, obviously, it's, it, it's a volunteer product, um, project, sort of, as far as I understood, so they're doing a great job. Um, convincing others to use OCaml is tricky, but so I will tell more about it tomorrow. Um, but it's not impossible. Um, how to get more users and contributors to Aracoon? We don't know, we've been trying, but if you guys want to hack on it, please feel free and let us know. Um, that's about it. Any questions?